Oh my god, this has to be a dream. This, this can't be reality, this has to be a dream. I just came back from school, I decided, you know, just for the heck of it, pay another visit to the recycle box. Oh my god, I came out with this Power Macintosh 7300. Holy crap. This is literally the stuff of my dreams. As a teenager, I used to dream of acquiring something like this. Old Macintosh. Holy crap. I haven't tried it yet. I just got home, so I haven't even really physically examined yet, it yet. It looks to be in intact shape. It's got the floppy drive and a CD-ROM drive. Came with this monitor connector. Yeah, old Macs have uh, proprietary display ports, don't they? Got no expansion cards. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what to think right now. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> let's hook this up to the TV. Oh wait, no. No, we can't hook it up to the TV. I don't have a, I don't have a VGA cable here. Well, oh well, let's uh, use the power cord from the TV and plug it in and see if it turns on. Hopefully it goes bong. Fingers crossed. Alright, let's uh, plug it in. Ah, oh, Jesus angled cable. Uh... Alright, uh, the only power cable I have here is a right angle connector that won't fit because this is in the way. So I think if I can remove this black pla back plastic cover I can, uh, I can get it to work. So uh, I've got an article up right now on how to disassemble these and apparently it's very easy. Okay, first I gotta take this screw and remove this trim piece. Wow, that was way harder than it should have been. Uh, it turns out out of all the Macintoshes that use this case style, the 7300 has a special feature called a security bar and it's very hard to get off. Actually, it's not hard at all to get off, but you'd never figure out how to do it. Unless you read the manual, which I found online. If you got, if you have a power Macintosh that has one of these things, it's got the screw right there, and the, this bar won't come out no matter how much you pull up on it. You gotta press in the center of it, press inward, and then it just pops right out. So now that that's off, I can flip it over. Ugh. And there's a tab here and a tab here. I gotta press up on those, and the case should pop right off. There we go. Oh, something fell off. Oh, some sort of shield thing. Uh, what do we got? A hard drive. Quantum Fireball TM, two gigabytes. Now, is this back cover able to come off easily? Okay, I did some more reading, so, uh, this thing flips open, that gives you access to the PCI slot, I, I assume they're PCI. And now this thing should pop like that, and this pops like that, and then, whee! Wow! <laughs> How's the power supply fan? Oh, it's in good shape, spins freely. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. the entire computer flips up there. Wow! Look at those RAM slots. How many RAM slots are here? Well, some of them might not be all RAM slots. But, uh, yeah, it looks like ECC EDO RAM to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slots. And then there's two more slots. One might be a processor cache slot. I don't know. Oh, no, are these the RAM slots? I don't even know. I have no idea how these old Macintoshes work. But right now, we're just seeing if we can, uh, get this thing to power up. But hey, look at that. We got our power supply power input right there. So uh, we should be able to plug that cable in and see if this thing powers on. All right, wow, this is one of the craziest tests all I've ever done. Let's see if this old Macintosh comes to life. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's press the power button. Let's hope it goes bong. Oh. I don't hear bong. The hard drive's loading something.
I don't know, it seems to be working. Power light? The hard drive's obviously loading Mac OS. And it sounds like it's done. It's too bad I don't have a monitor cable here. Holy crap. I open the optical drive. Yeah. The quantum fireball is quite noisy. Let's turn it off. And uh, let's see if it bongs this time. Wow. That's really creepy sounding because the speaker is actually picking up the switching frequency of the hard drive motor. That's why the hard drive sounds so loud when it spins up. Yeah, it's, it's possible it won't bong because uh, in the operating system if you mute the sound it'll mute the bong when it turns on as well. Well you know what, it's clearly loading something from the hard drive. So I would say this thing works. When I get home, which will be tomorrow as of filming this, we will find out more. Here's the specs from Low End Mac. Well, it talks about the 7600, but I guess they're saying that because the 7300 was around the same time. Introduced in early 1997, discontinued late 1997. Takes between system 7.5.5, which is actually freely available online. Apple made it available for anyone to download to use on their vintage Macs. Up to Mac OS 9.1 and use macOS 9.2 you can upgrade those to have not just a G3 but a G4 processor oh my god can't imagine that old thing from 1997 having a, a G4 processor and uh, if you put one of them in you can run macOS 9.2 and mine's the 200 model so it's got the 200 megahertz PowerPC 604E processor the 604E was the last generation of PowerPC processors before the G3 4 megabyte ROM, comes with 32 megabytes of RAM standard, expandable to half a gigabyte. And uh, yes, those eight long sockets I saw, that's indeed for the uh, RAM. And I'm just reading now, these uh, four white slots, those are for the video memory. Uh, this shorter slot here says cache on it, so that must be for the CPU. And then this other slot here, uh, it looks just like the uh, CPU cache slot, but it says ROM SIM on it, so that must be for some ROM expansion. I don't know what that would be. Also, apparently, while it hasn't been officially tested, and I haven't bothered looking up to see if people actually have tested it, you might actually be able to use a gigabyte of RAM in it. Macs during this time were extremely expandable. It's actually quite impressive. Two megabytes of video memory, able to be expanded to four megabytes. Resolution up to 1280 by 1024. 256 CPU cache standard can be expanded to a megabyte. Oh, apparently it's got SCSI. Uh, hmm. Oh, geez, sure enough. I figured this was an IDE hard drive. It's actually SCSI. Oh, crap. And so is the CD ROM drive. Well, I hope the CD ROM drive works, and I hope the hard drive never fails, nor the CD ROM drive, because it'll be really expensive if I ever have to get replacements. 12x CD ROM drive. Three PCI slots, those are PCI. And it's got the Apple desktop bus, keyboard, and mouse. And it's got a 150 watt power supply. The PRAM battery, which I'll undoubtedly have to change. Well guys, there's a first look of the Apple Power Macintosh 7300. Holy crap, what a find. This has got to be not only the best find I've ever uh, found in that recycle box, but this is quite possibly the best computer acquisition that's uh, ever happened to me. I cannot wait to uh, try this thing home, or to uh, <laughs> rather get this thing home and try it out and see, uh, see if it works. Now, the only thing that really worries me is the popping and buzzing sounds that the speaker makes. I found even after the computer boots up, the keyboard, the speaker makes hissing and popping and buzzing noises. And, uh, that combined with the lack of a bong makes me wonder if the sound actually isn't muted, just the sound plain doesn't work for some reason, I don't know. Hopefully that's not the case. Anyway, there's this computer. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I will see you guys later. Okay, I'm going to try one last thing. I did some more reading, and uh, right there, under the processor card, 
is a little button. It's called the uh, CUDA button. C-U-D-A. It's an acronym for something which I don't know. And uh, basically the CUDA is a piece of uh, volatile memory that holds other system parameters that the PRAM doesn't hold. And that's kind of weird. And uh, apparently its power is kept uh, separate from like the the power provided by the pram battery which you see I've removed but I don't know I've tried pressing it anyway let's turn it on and see if we get a bong I even if pressing the button did do something I doubt it would fix the bong if the sound is in fact muted but let's see whoa you're kidding me wow that was actually it hey we had a bong sweet I bet this thing works absolutely perfect. I have no doubt in my mind. I'll be very surprised if it turns out that there's anything wrong with it. I'll tell you what I don't like though. I don't like hearing that speaker pop every time the hard drive does a seek. The speaker is basically mimicking the sounds of the hard drive. Once the hard drive settles down, then the speaker will go quiet. Maybe it's where I have this open. Maybe when this is closed, this metal uh, metal structure provides a shield, so the speaker doesn't get as much noise. I don't know, but the th the fact that it's making that popping kind of worries me. I, it makes me wonder if there might be a bad capacitor somewhere. I don't know. Well, there you go. We got a bong. Sweet. I love it. This is a perfect mint in box with everything it came with new. iMac G3 Graphite. This is without a doubt the most unique, most beautiful, most coolest computer I've ever obtained. This is an F20 T12 strip light made by Lithonia Lighting, a very large American lighting company. And uh, this was actually sent to me by YouTube user and lighting gallery user, The Universal Dave One. 